Masters. Stream all episodes now on ITVX. Good evening. A serving Kent police officer has appeared in court accused of having a sexual relationship with a woman he met during an investigation. PC Matthew Peel, who is based in Canterbury, is charged with misconduct in public office. Tom Savidi sent this from Westminster Magistrates Court. Police Constable Matthew Peel, seen here at the back, leaves court after facing an allegation that he abused his position for a sexual purpose. The 45-year-old from Dover, who works at Canterbury Police Station, is alleged to have committed the offence in 2019. He's accused of pursuing a sexual or an improper emotional relationship with a woman he met while investigating a burglary. During the brief five-minute hearing here at Westminster Magistrates Court, PC Matthew Pill spoke only to confirm his name, date of birth and home address. His defence team indicated that he would plead not guilty at his next court appearance. That will be at Southwark Crown Court on April the 20th, after the district judge said the nature of the case means it cannot be heard in a magistrate's court. PC Peel is facing one charge of misconduct in public office. Tom Savides, ITV News, London. A vicar from Worthing has been warned he faces a lengthy prison sentence after being found guilty of eight offences, including having more than 20,000 indecent images and videos of children and animals on his computer. Reverend David Renshaw was remanded in custody at court in Hove. The 63-year-old was the vicar in Worthing who was found dead out in the vicarage and the RSPCA sees severely malnourished dogs, cats and chickens. He will be sentenced in May. The heads of more than 40 schools across Brighton and Hove have written to the Education Secretary saying money is so tight there is nothing else left to cut. 32% of those schools say there will be £50,000 in the red this year. The government says it's pumping record sums of money into education and giving schools greater flexibility in how they spend it. Malcolm Shaw has our report. Elm Grove Primary is a successful school and oversubscribed, but the head teacher here is one of more than 40 across Brighton and Hove who've signed a letter to the Education Secretary saying their financial situation is now at crisis point. Everything's gone up in prices, everybody knows that, but I think the tipping point came when there were unfunded pay awards given last year that schools had already set their budgets, everything was in place, and then suddenly we were hit with this very, very large additional cost that schools had to find. Parents at the school have recently created this food and clothes bank, providing groceries and uniforms that many families can no longer afford. We have to buy blinds, we have to repair classrooms, we have to buy new carpets, we have to buy new tables and chairs, we have to paint bathrooms. That's the charity that is doing that, not the school. The school doesn't have the money. Our school, all the schools in Brighton are doing a brilliant job, but there just isn't enough money to provide what our children need. The head teachers in the city submitted comments to the government about the cuts they say they've had to make to staffing, teaching materials and building repairs. One said, I am knowingly making decisions based on what is cheap, not what is best for children or the planet. I can no longer sleep at night. Another claimed I've been a head teacher in Brighton and Hove for 16 years. However, this is by far the worst financial crisis I have experienced. While a third said, we have nothing left to cut. Please send help. The Department for Education gave us a statement. They say we are investing an extra £2 billion both next year and the year after, which will bring spending on schools to its highest ever level in real terms, totalling £58.8 billion by 2024-25. They go on, schools will have flexibility over how they use the additional funding to support their pupils.
Across the city, head teachers say they expect to run up substantial budget deficits and shielding the children from the effects will be all but impossible. Malcolm Shaw, ITV News, Brighton. Six weeks after the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, families are still waiting alongside the rubble, hoping to find the bodies of their loved ones. The devastation in the region has been revealed by a team of benefactors from Hearn Bay who were there delivering a lorry load of aid. Kerry Swain has our report. For children who've lost everything, this suitcase crammed with sweets is overwhelming. Last seen being packed in Hearn Bay by the North Thanet MP Sir Roger Gale, the yellow case has arrived in the province of Hatay in southern Turkey, on a lorry full of gifts donated by people in Kent. Six weeks after the earthquake killed more than 57,000 people, it's no longer in our headlines, but the horror of this story has not diminished. Family still waiting for machines to go in in hope they're going to find bodies of their relatives are also like of course the hope is not dying they hope it, it, they will come out how can we sell alive maya will not allow us to turn our eyes from the disaster originally from turkmenistan she dedicates her life to the poor homeless and lonely in hern bay but the level of need here is extreme they don't have anything guys they don't have anything they barely saved their lives and all the rest was in their houses. The state of these kids, sweets, we just bring them sweets. They were fighting, arguing and crying over sweets. I wish I can bring 10 lorries of sweets and toys here. The devastation is unlike anything I've ever seen. Over 13 million people are affected by this and over 700,000 properties. And I've seen a tiny, tiny fraction of it. We were talking to a lot of families, moms, they lost the kids, kids lost the moms. It's just like a hell, like end of the world. They're sleeping in the tents for, what is it, about 40 days now since earthquake. They get less help, but situation is getting worse. Maya's next mission is to raise enough money to bring another two lorries full of donated aid, including portable toilets, to survivors of one of the deadliest natural disasters in modern history. Kerry Swain, ITV News. Plans to turn Manston Airport into an air freight hub will face a judicial review for a second time following an appeal hearing at the Royal Court of Justice of the project last year. Today, Judge Mrs Justice Levine granted the review on three points and asked for one on climate change to be addressed in writing within a week. The site's owners, River Oak, say the review could delay plans to introduce flights there in 2026. A wanted man who police are searching for after he breached the terms of his release from prison has caused a stir on social media. Police in Sussex offered a £500 reward on Facebook to find Curtis Harrison, who's 32, and who has links to Crawley, Tunbridge Wells and Uckfield. Shortly after the post, Harrison replied saying, pay me the £500 and I'll hand myself in. He is still at large and anyone with information is asked to contact police. Nudists are being given the opportunity to strip off almost 500 feet in the air as Brighton's I360 hosts an event run by a group called Nothing On Events. 200 people are expected to take part at the tail end of the day tomorrow with sunset during the flight up. We're told being naked is not compulsory but as this sign says it might offer some of Brighton's best views. Let's take a look at your weather now. Here's Philip and Drew. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent boilers and heat pumps. Sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Good evening. It looks as though the unsettled weather is with us for a little while longer. Certainly as we head through the latter part of the week, it stays fairly changeable. Showers are longer spells of rain, quite blustery, but still mild for a time. And then signs of a brief respite on Monday, something a lot quieter, but it will come hand in hand with something a bit chillier as well.
Out through at the moment, things are already quieting down. We had a lot of clouds evening. Now, clear weather, dry conditions, and clear skies. But even with those air skies, it's not going to be especially chilly. We'll keep the breeze, and that will keep the temperatures up. So, lows tonight for many of us of seven or eight degrees Celsius. Tomorrow morning, then, a very decent start to the day initially. A good deal of dry and sunny weather, but do make the most of it because it won't be long at all before we see the showers developing. They are become quite widespread as we head through the day. Some of them on the heavy side, even the risk of the odd rumble of thunder, perhaps even a little bit of hail and even in the best of the sunshine I think a fairly fresh feel to things tomorrow highs of 13 and still that brisk breeze more of the same into the weekend quieter and somewhat chillier come Monday take care bye bye Valent sponsors ITV Meridian weather And that's your news in the southeast. We're back during Good Morning Britain from six o'clock tomorrow morning. Join Amanda for that. But from the late team, thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>